motion of a charged particle in uniform magnetic field direction of force using Fleming's left hand rule okay I am going to find the direction of force using Fleming's left hand rule it is three dimensional so you need to imagine everything if forefinger is indicating the direction of magnetic field here this is forefinger forefinger is indicating the direction of magnetic field and middle finger is indicating the direction of current then thumb will indicate the direction of force now here we are considering a magnetic field this is perpendicular magnetic field the cross sign indicates it is into the plane it is going into the plane that is the reason for this cross sign here there is a charge the charge is q okay the charge is moving in this direction this is the path of the charge positive charge that is the direction of current this is the direction of current and we have the direction of magnetic field here we need to apply Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of force magnetic field is into the plane and it is the direction of current and what is the direction of force so I'm going to apply left hand Fleming's left hand rule here the middle finger this is my middle finger this is indicating the current and the forefinger is into the plane okay that is indicating magnetic field then force will be indicated by the thumb so th here the direction of force will be this this is the direction of force because thumb is pointing in upward direction so that is the direction of force when we are applying Fleming's left hand rule middle finger is indicating current forefinger is indicating perpendicular magnetic field into the plane and thumb will indicate the direction of force that is this is the direction of force because of this force because of this force it will move in this manner right it will be the path because of this force it will move in this manner there is a small deviation in the direction of force now we are going to find again the direction of force okay here we are changing the finger from there and we are going to apply the finger left hand rule here okay this is the direction of current here okay and magnetic field into the plane so I am going to apply Fleming's left hand rule here also this is the direction of current magnetic field into the plane and this is the direction of force there's a small inclination in the force right so here this is the direction of force similarly wherever we are applying the force will be having an inclination everywhere so the next movement will be like this again there will be force in this manner you can apply Fleming's left hand rule again we are moving because of the force again there will be force again it will take a turn okay again there will be force again it will be taking a turn again there will be force so if these lines are very small if these all lines are very small here we have considered a big line if this particle movement is very small then we can consider this as a circle so a charge in a uniform magnetic field if it is entering into the magnetic field it will be having a circular path it will possess a circular motion you can write it and this force is acting to the center so this force is also known as radial force or you can call it a centripetal force when a charged particle is entering into a magnetic field uniform magnetic field it will be having a circular path because of this force continuously the direction of force is changing it is con converting it is changing into a radial force because of this radial force the charged particle will be moving in a circular path and it is having a centripetal force centripetal force okay this is the radius of the circle it is r okay if a charge enters to a perpendicular magnetic field because of this magnetic force it will move in a circular path magnetic force is acting as centripetal force so if it is a perpendicular magnetic field uniform perpendicular magnetic field it will be having a circular path and here the magnetic force the force is acting as a centripetal force so we can write fm equal to what is the equation for centripetal force mv square by r fm equal to mv square by r and we have an equation for fm fm is qb sin theta here theta what is the angle between v, cro v and b it is 90 degree because it is perpendicular magnetic field F fm equal to qb sin 90 fm equal to qvb 
here we are substituting this equation here we can do one thing this fm equal to qvb we can substitute here so what will be the new equation qvb equal to mv squared by r we can cancel the v v and v will cancel then it will be qb equal to mv by r very important relation write this qb equal to mv by r you can make equations for various quantities from this equation you can make equation for b you can make equation for v you can make equation for r everywhere you can interchange you can transform this equation and you can make different equations i am going to make an equation for v from this equation v will be equal to q b r by m right another equation now i am going to make an equation for r r r equal to it will be i am taking this r to the other side it will be r equal to mv by qb this mv is momentum you can write p also mv mass into velocity is momentum that is another equation if we are increasing the velocity of charge what is going to happen to the radius of the circle if we are increasing the velocity of charge what is going to happen to the radius of the circle we are increasing the velocity we are increasing velocity so what is happening to this radius here when we are discussing that kind of question you need to take m q b all are constant m q b all are constant okay when we are increasing velocity what will happen to this radius radius will increase it is a rotation so there will be an angular velocity linear velocity and angular velocity there is an equation v equal to r omega v equal to r omega r omega equal to q b r by m r omega is v we have the equation for v q b r by m so we can write r omega equal to q b r by m so which all values will cancel here r and r will cancel right so it will be omega equal to q b by m another equation omega equal to q b by m now what is the relation between time period and omega 2 pi by omega t equal to 2 pi by omega now we can substitute this omega in this equation t will be equal to 2 pi q b by m then t equal to 2 pi m by q b this is another equation t equal to 2 pi m by q b frequency we are going to find frequency what is the relation between time period and frequency 1 by t reciprocal right so here we have the equation for t so frequency nu equal to 1 by t so just take the reciprocal nu equal to q b by 2 pi m so this is opposite right it is reciprocal kinetic energy is equal to half mv square find the kinetic energy of this particle rotating particle velocity is v q b r by m so we are substituting kinetic energy equal to half into m into instead of v square it will be q square b square r square all divided by m square we can cancel the m then kinetic energy will be equal to q square b square r square by 2m okay there is a circle and another one another cycle uh, another rotation my question is which is having more time period which is having more time period this is uh, rotation number one this is rotation number two which rotation is uh, required more time period equal to 2 pi m by q b 2 pi m by q b so we from this equation we can say that time period is depends on mass depends on magnetic field depends on q charge but time period is independent on r r is not in this equation so we cannot say that this this circle is having more time period both circle is having same time period time period is same if a charge is moving in this circle if charge is moving in this circle both will take same time to complete one circular motion why there is an equation for radius also what is the equation for radius mv by qb okay if these all values are constant then if there is an increase in radius the velocity has to increase if there is an increase in radius the velocity has to increase